sir. Me? Oh, I shoot fish. Pigs, donkeys, camels, tourists. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, guys, uh, be honest, because um, I want to preface this by saying I love the show, but when I heard about it, Wolf Creek the series, I thought, that's the dumbest fucking idea I've ever heard of. Me like, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, um, yeah. Uh, Greg, who, uh, who always thinks outside the square, God love him, you know, sure. and that's what makes him so great, um, he said, I've, I've been pitching the, the, t the TV show, you know, a Mick Wolf Creek TV show, and I said, that's getting a bit gratuitous, isn't it? You know, trotting Mick out a bit now, and um, so I just couldn't see it. I, did, I, I it's a film. I couldn't imagine it being a TV show. Anyway, so I said, no, I'm not going to commit to that. You'll have to send me some scripts before I'm convinced. And uh, sent me the scripts, and, and the scripts were bloody amazing. They're really good scripts. And as you know, there's three things you need to make a film: a script, a script, and a script. Yeah. So, um, and it, it's transferred really well. So, um, it, it took the scripting stage to get you on board. Um, were you just there from the start? Were you just happy to be kind of involved or? I kind of had the first reaction fairly similar as well. Yeah. Because I was wondering how is it possible to be a series? And then I read it and it was this kick-ass female character and there were a few scenes in it of her just doing wild stuff that I was like, oh. I really want to do that. Um, has Greg been sitting on this for a while, or was this just something that sort of came together? I think it just sort of came to him that, because um, Mick's very, uh, Mick, Greg's very savvy with, um, you know, what's happening in, in, in the modern world, whereas I'm not, you know. Right. Uh, and he's up with social media and, um, you know, housewives of the dead and desperate, and he, <laughs> he, he, he covers a lot of ground and he understands what, what the world's looking at. and. He's very aware that streaming and through people like Stan is, is the future. And uh, so, and that's why the Wolf Creek film was so good because he wasn't afraid to make it look a little bit documentary and a little bit newsreel, you know, that, that young people um, are tuned to. So, yeah, I, I think um, in the end, I think it's an innovative thing to do. Um, uh I was about to call you Mick. How, you're so synonymous with Mick. I just called Greg McLean Mick. I well, mean. I mean, in a way, we're all Mick. Um, a little bit how, of Mick in all of us. How do you how do you get back to Mick? Like, how do you? I mean, are you like a method actor? Are you like actually stalking? No, I'm a professional actor, mate. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, it's, it's, it's like um, you know, uh, if you get good at mountain biking, and then you put the bike away. Right. So the first the first time I had to work pretty hard at it and uh, to, to perfect the character as far as I could in the first one. And then I knew it worked. So now it's like, uh, I know what to do. I just get on the bike and off I, get on the Mick bike and off I go. Does, does it get weird? Do you, do you find some darkness within yourself or is it just, you know? Oh, it's off? just acting right. to me. Um, it's, uh, it's just this mad character that I play for a little while and um, and that, that to me is a good part of acting. It's just like I did the odd angry shot and for, for six weeks I was an SAS soldier, yeah. you know, and then I did blue fin and I learned how to catch massive tuna off the back of a boat and I was a fisherman for a little while. You, you can pretend to be all these things and go a long way to being actually those things without being it or putting up with being in the army, for instance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Once the sideburns come out and the hat goes on, yeah. is he Mick? Like, oh, is it is it weird? You can. Tell it's us. Okay. when when John's like this. Right. Great mates, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Soon as that happens, I just yeah, it's scary. <laughs> um, Eve is tough, uh, but she's also likable, which is something that a lot of horror films and thrillers and just mm. film in general misses. Um, and it's, it's weird too because uh, your character has a sort of implied prior substance abuse problem mm. and is troubled and all this kind of stuff. How do you make someone likeable um, or are you just naturally just that likeable? <laughs> um, oh, that being likeable isn't really something that I think about so much playing a character but it's more just about being honest and I think that if, if you watch someone being honest you like them. 
it's if they're if you're watching a character and you see a facade then it then it's not relatable but I guess trying to be as as honest as I could is what you know there's a lot of hopefully I think some very human moments where you just like feel her so yeah I think I think that's well Lu Lucy's got a she's just born with w this warmth anyway and she's one of those rare creatures who are cerebrally intelligent and emotionally intelligent, especially yeah. for her age. Um, and, you know, we've had prime ministers like Bob Hawke who've only been cerebrally intelligent. So um, the mixture of those two things uh, makes it for a very complex, but you can't help liking her. Yeah, I mean, I've only seen the first episode. Obviously, I haven't mm. seen it all. But um, I, I remember thinking, yeah, I want to see this arc. I want to see where it ends. Mm. Um, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm there for the journey. Um, a weird counterpoint to that is Mick is also really likable mm. and he should totally not be at all likable. Like, it's mm. weird how much you like Mick mm. with these sort of one-liners that are terrible dad jokes, but he's also kind of stabbing someone with a Bowie knife at the same time, so you're like, I'm not going to make fun yeah. of the dad joke. That's fine. But um, why? Why is Mick likable? Why do we like Mick? Uh, because uh, he is likable. Um, like so many of these serial killers, he's such a nice guy, you know? He watered the roses in the morning. Who'd known that there was 27 people buried under his house? You know, it's people don't walk around saying, "Look at me, I'm a bad man." Um, and he doesn't see himself as a horrible person. He just thinks there's some jerks with backpacks and tourists that just get in the road, and he feels as sorry for them as he does when he shoots a bull in the head. You know, um, so he, he is. If you took the psychopath and the serial killer out of him. He's a, he's a likable bloke who you'd have a really uh, fun drink with at the pub. Yeah, he does seem you know, like the guy and if you crossed him, around too. If you cross him, he'd punch your head in because he's a rough, tough, <laughs> no. out back kind of guy. But yeah, so he's based on my father, but my oh, dad really? wasn't a psychopath or a serial killer, but dad was a big, robust, out back, funny guy. There's something quintessentially Australian about Mick, the fact that he operates in this kind of expansive wasteland that is the Australian outback. Mm. And he is, there is, he's in no hurry. Like he's kind of got, he's got yeah, acres like of land to kill him. Outback Pepe Le Pew, he just, <laughs> just keeps walking and finds you. Is that the problem? Does he need to find love? Like, could that be the, nah. the, the bride of Mick? You're getting a bit Freudian now. Um, <laughs> the only feeling that Mick has is he feels like a Tui. <laughs> Feels like a two is a two or whatever. Have have um, have you ever come across a moment in any of the films um, uh, and the series where you've kind of thought, Jesus, that's too far, that's that's too much? Only watching it back. Right. Making it no, right. because it's the Germans' heads made of rubber. You yeah, know, yeah. it's it's. But watching it and when it's put together, I think, oh my God, I did that. Do you reckon that this might be the way to uh, woo the critics to Wolf Creek? Because I think we've talked about this as well. Um, Who cares? <laughs> but one of the darkest moments for me as a horror fan in, in Australian um, history of, of cinema reviewing and, and critiquing was when David and Margaret refused to uh, review Wolf Creek 2. Yeah. Didn't give it a bad score. Refused yeah. to review it. Wouldn't I deign know, to look yeah. at it. Well, Nana Stratton and Pop Pomerantz. Oh, um, yeah, they... Um, the champions, anti-censorship and all that, and they censored our movie. Yeah. In principle, I thought it was a, a very low blow and um, they needed a good uh, spanking. Um, but m from a marketing point of view, I hope, uh, well, well, Stratton's no longer doing it, but um, uh, Margaret still is. I hope they never review it again because the, the, the press we get out of it's extraordinary. Yeah. So, from a selling point of view, it's terrific. Personally, <laughs> privately, and uh, in, in principle, I'd rather they gave us minus five and just, um, yeah. just review. You don't it, have to like it, it apart. But, I, I, but review it. It's the thing. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is a bit different. This is much less. I mean, it's still very grisly, but it, it's much more a redemption story mm. for you. Mm. How how would you sell it? Um, if you would had to pitch it, elevator pitch. Uh, what the TV show? Yeah, how would you get people in if they're like, no, I, I found the movies were too much, you know? If they found the movies too much, well, I wouldn't try and sell it to them. Right. <laughs> um, you know, you've got to like the Wolf Creek uh, franchise. In, sure. Uh, well, to me, it's um, it's got all the horror that the horror fans want, and you know, they'll see the opening sequence and they'll, and it's not at all pussy, and they'll be very happy with that. 
and uh, and then they watch probably the most extraordinary piece of television on the planet. Uh, I just think uh, the production values, the acting, the story especially, um, is gripping and and um, mind blowingly good. And very, I'm very very proud of it. And if you miss out on seeing it, you're missing out on probably uh, a very good piece of television. Uh, and I'm not saying that because I'm in it. It's, it's just a, a fact. Well, and my mum, who is the biggest scaredy cat in the world, she hates mm. horror films. She watched mm. the first 20 minutes screaming like this, and then after that, it kind of opened up a little bit, and she was like, ooh, what's happening? And she got really excited and really into it as the characters developed and as the first episode moved along. And I thought, I thought she wasn't going to be able to watch it at all. And she's really excited to see the second episode now. So. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the sincerest yeah. form of compliment yeah. that I really want to see and, what happens. And, and, a, and another friend of mine dragged his wife along who wasn't going to come and then finally she, she turned up and she went, oh, I'm here now. And we got to the end of it and she couldn't wait to see the second one. So that gives you an indication how good it is. So all available on Stan May 12th? Yeah. 12th. Yep. John Jarrett, Lucy Fry, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.